Okay, so finishing the chapter of Aragog. We thought it was going to attack us, Ron. Leaning against the car, patting it, wondering where it had gone. Harry squinted around the floodlight, the gr ground for sign for more spiders, but they had all scuttled away from the glare of the headlights. We've lost the trail, he said. Come on, let's go find them. Ron didn't speak. He didn't move. His eyes were fixed on a point some ten feet away above the forest floor. Right behind Harry, his face was livid with terror. Harry didn't even have time to turn around. There was a loud clicking noise, and then suddenly he felt something long and hairy seize him from around the middle and lift him off the ground so that he was facing, hanging face down, struggling, terrified. They heard more clicking, and he saw Ron's legs leave the ground, too. He heard Fang whimpering and howling. Next moment, we were be he was being swept away into the dark trees. Head hanging, Harry saw they, they had a hold of him. His marching on six immensely long hairy legs, and the front two clutching him tightly. Below a pair of shining black pinchers, behind him, he could see another creature, no doubt carrying Ron. They were moving into the very heart of the forest. Harry could hear Fang fighting to free himself, and the third monster whining loudly. Harry couldn't have yelled even if he tried. He seemed to have left his voice back at the car clearing. He never knew how long he had been in the creature's clutches. He only knew the darkness and suddenly lifted enough for him to see that the leaf-strewn ground was now swarming with spiders. Craning his neck sideways, he realized that they had reached the ridge of the vast hollow, a hollow that had been cleared of the trees so that the stars shone brightly onto the, the worst scene he'd ever laid eyes on. Spiders, not tiny spiders, surging over the leaves below. Spiders, the size of cart horses, eight eyes, eight-legged, black, hairy, gigantic. The massive specimen that was carrying Harry made its way down to the steep slope towards a misty, doomed web in the very center of the hollow while the other fellows closed in all around, clicking their pinchers excitedly at the sight of its load. Harry fell to the ground on all fours, and the spiders released him. Ron's fangs, Ron and Fang thudded down next to him. Fang wasn't howling anymore, but recovered silently on the, sp on the spot. Ron looked exactly like Harry felt. His mouth was stretched as wide as a silent scream, and his eyes were popping. Harry suddenly realized that the spider had dropped him and was saying something. It was hard to tell because of all the clicking. He clicked his pinchers with every word. Aragog, it called. Aragog! And from the middle of the misty, doomed web, domed web, a spider the size of a small elephant emerged very slowly. This was gray and black in his body, his legs, and each of the eyes were his, on his ugly pinchers' head were milky white. He was blind. What is it? said the clicking pinchers rapidly. Men, clicked the spider, who caught Harry. Is it Hagrid? Aragog moving closer, his eight milky eyes wandering va vaguely. Strangers, clicked the spider who had brought Ron. Kill them, clicked Aragog fretfully. I was sleeping. We're friends of Hagrid's, Harry shouted. His heart seemed to be left to his chest to pound into the throat. Click, 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 click. Went the pinchers and the spiders all around the hollow. Aragog paused. Harry, Hagrid has never sent me any men in the hollow before, he said slowly. Hagrid's in trouble, said Harry, breathing very fast. That's why we've come. In trouble, said the aged spider. And Harry thought he heard concern beneath the clicking pinchers. But why has he sent you? Harry thought of getting up to his feet, but he decided against it because he didn't think his legs would support him. So he spoke from the ground calmly as he could. They think up at the school that Hagrid has been setting uh, something on the students. They've sent him to Azkaban. Aragog clinked his pinchers furiously. All around the low sound echoed by the crowd of spiders. It was like an applause, except 
Applause didn't usually make Harry feel as sick to sick with fear. But that was years ago, said Aragog fretfully. Years and years ago. I remember it well. That's why they made him leave the school. They believed I was the monster that dwells in what they call the Chamber of Secrets. They thought that Hagrid had opened the chamber and set me free. And you? You didn't come out of the Chamber of Secrets? Asked Harry, Harry, who could feel the cold sweat on his forehead. I? Said Aragog, clicking angrily. I was not I, bo I was born. I was not born in the castle. I came from a distant land. A traveler gave me to Hagrid when I was an egg. Hagrid was only a boy, but when he cared for me, hidden in a cupboard in the castle, feeding me on scraps from that table. Hagrid is my good friend and a good man. When I discovered and blamed him for the death of the girl, he protected me. I have lived here for the force ever since where Hagrid still visits me. He even found me my wife, Masog. And now you see my family has all grown with Hagrid's goodness. Harry summoned what remained of his courage. So you never attacked anyone? Never, croaked the old spider. It would have been in my instinct, but out of respect for Hagrid, I never harmed humans. The body of the girl who was killed was discovered in the bathroom. I never saw part of that castle that what but the cupboard. It's where I grew up. Our kind of don't our kind like dark and quiet. But then, do you know what did kill that girl? Said Harry. Because whatever it is is back and it's attacking people. His words were drowned out by a loud outbreak of clicking and rustling, many long legs shifting in anger. Large black shapes shifted all around him. The thing that lives in the castle, said Aragog. Is an ancient creature we spiders fear above all others. Well do I remember how I pleaded with Hagrid to let me go when I sensed the beast moving with the, about the school. What is it? asked Harry urgently. More loud clicking and rustling. Spiders seem to be closing in. We do not speak of it, said Aragog fierce, fiercely. We do not name it. I never told Hagrid the name of the dread, dreaded creature though he's asked me many times. Harry didn't want to press the subject with his spicers, or with his <laughs> spiders. Pressing closer on all sides, Aragog seemed to be tired of talking. He was backing away slowly in his domed web, and his fellow spiders continued inching gloomily towards Harry and Ron. Well, we'll just go then, Harry said desperately to Aragog, hearing the leaves rustle behind him. Go, said Aragog slowly. I think not. But, but, my sons and daughters do not harm Hagrid on my command. I cannot die them fresh meat, deny them fresh meat, when it wanders willingly, so willingly, into our midst. Goodbye, friend of Hagrid. Harry spun around, feet away, towering over him, was a solid wall of spiders, clicking their many eyes, gleaming in their ugly black heads. Even as he reached for his wand, Harry knew it was no good. There were too many of them. But as he tried to stand, ready to, for the fighting, a loud noise sounded. A blaze of light flamed through the hollow. Mr. Weasley's car was thundering down the slope, headlights glaring and the horn screeching, knocking spiders everywhere. Several were thrown on their backs, their endless legs waving in the air, and the car screeched to a halt. And in front of them, Harry and Ron, the doors flew open. Get Fang! Harry yelled. Diving in the front seat, Ron seized the boar hound around the middle of and threw him in, yelping, into the back of the car, and the door slammed shut. Ron didn't even touch the accelerator, but the car didn't need him to. The engine roared, and they were off, hitting more spiders. They sped up down the slope, out of the hollow, and they were soon crashing through the forest branches. Whipping the windows of the car, wound his way cleverly through the widgets and ga widest gaps, following the path. Obviously, it obviously knew. Harry looked sideways at Ron. His mouth was still open and the silent scream, but his eyes weren't popping out anymore. Are you okay? Ron stared straight ahead, unable to speak. They smashed their way through the undergrowth. Fang howled loudly in the back seat, and Harry saw the side mirror snap off, and they squeezed past a large oak. In ten noisy, rocky minutes, 
The trees thinned. Harry could again see the patches of sky. The car stopped suddenly, and they were nearly thrown into the windshield. They had reached the edge of the forest. Fang threw himself out the window in an anxiety to get out. And when Harry opened the door, he shot off through the trees into Hagrid's house, tail between his legs. Harry got out, too, and after a minute or so, Ron seemed to regain the feeling in his limbs and followed. Still stiff-necked and startling, Harry gave the car a grateful pat as it reversed back into the forbidden forest and disappeared from view. Harry went back into Hagrid's cabin to get the invisibility cloak. Fang was trembling under the blanket in his basket. When Harry got outside, he found Ron be being violently sick in the pumpkin patch. Follow the spiders, he said weakly, wiping his mouth on his sleeve. Oh, I'll never forgive Hagrid. We're lucky to be alive. I bet he thought Aragog wouldn't hurt his friends of his, said Harry. That's exactly Hagrid's problem, said Ron, thumping the wall of the cabin. He always thinks monsters aren't as bad as they're made out. And look where it's got him, a seven Azkaban. He was shivering uncontrollably now. What was the point of sending us then there? What have we found out? I'd like to know. Well, the Hagrid never opened the Chamber of Secrets, said Harry, throwing the cloak over Ron and prodding him with his arm to make him walk. He's innocent. Ron gave a loud snort. Evidently hatching Aragog in a cupboard wasn't his idea of innocent. As the castle loomed near, Harry twitched the cloak to make sure that the feet were also hidden. Then he pushed the creaking door down the jar. He walked carefully back across the entrance hall and up to the marble staircase, holding their breath as they passed the corridors and the watchful sentries who were walking. At last, they reached the safety of the Gryffindor common room, where they had fire had burned itself out into a glowing ash. They took the cloak off and climbed up the winding do do dormitory stair. Ron fell onto his bed without bothering to get undressed. Harry, however, didn't feel very sleepy. He sat on the edge of his front four-poster bed, thinking hard about everything Aragog had said. The creature that was lurking somewhere in the castle, he thought, sounded like a sort of monster, Voldemort. Even other monsters didn't want to name it. But he and Ron were no closer to finding out it was or how petrified its victims. Even Hagrid had never been known what that was in the Chamber of Secrets. Harry swung his legs onto his bed, laid back against his pillow, watching the moon glinting in him from the tower window. He couldn't see what else they c they could do. They had hit dead ends everywhere. Riddle had caught the wrong person. The heir of Slytherin had got off. And no one could tell whether it was the same person or a different one who had opened the chamber this time. There was nobody else to ask. Harry lay down thinking about what Aragog said. He was becoming drowsy when it seemed like there was very little hope occurred to him and he suddenly sat bolt upright. Ron! He hissed in the dark. Ron! Ron woke up with a yelp like fangs, stared wildly around and saw Harry. Ron! The girl who died, Aragog said, she was found in the bathroom said Harry, ignoring Neville's snuffing no snores from the corner. What if she never left the bathroom? What if it's still that she's still there? Ron rubbed his eyes, frowning the through the moonlight. And then he understood, too. <gasps> you don't think? That moaning myrtle.